I'm missing out on a gold medal in 1500 meters, but Timothy Riot performed very well. I think bagging a silver or bronze, we yet to confirm because multitasking when we're doing a live show, it's a bit hectic. But of course, we continue with the show until three o'clock. Touchline is the show, of course. This time round is fans on fan favorite segment where we're discussing international football. Community Shield returns this particular evening away from English Premier League, which is set to kick off. With, uh, you know, a lot of transfers happening in European football. We've seen. Barcelona announcing departure of Lionel Messi, a man who's given full commitment to the team, Jack Grealish, joining Manchester City from Unaston Villa, who has had a lucrative uh, transfer business this particular season. They are aiming for top four finish, maybe, or qualify for Europa League next season. Of course, United, Rafael Varane catching up the services of former Real Madrid man, and of course, they already signed Jordan Sancho from uh, Borussia Dortmund. Ken Andrews joining us. Roberto Soro, of course, is on the show as well. Ken, good to see you, man. How have you been? Yeah, I've been good. It's great to be back here once again. Yeah, and I can, also, I can also see you multitasking between <laughs> getting yeah. to know what's happening in football, which is your, you know, uh, sporting discipline and even in Tokyo Olympics. Yeah, you know, supporting our own. It's supporting very, very our own. Important. It's good to be patriotic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what happened to Lionel Messi, Bernard? It was quite unexpected, you know, just yeah. getting to the news that, you know, Barcelona is announcing departure of Lionel Messi on mutual consent. Can it be financially instigated? Yeah, that might be the case because of everything they are talking about, Lionel Messi leaving Barcelona because of finances, in that considering the pandemic, the club cannot get to get the wages that they can go ahead and pay Lionel Messi. But I think also it, it was a wake-up call for Barcelona because they also knew that at one point in time, Lionel Messi will be out of Barcelona and people have got to come to terms with that. And fans of Barcelona will also have to understand that great players come and go and they'll never be in your club of forever they'll at one point in time they'll have to leave wow of course timothy Riot getting confirmed he bagged silver medal in 1500 meters a race that was won by jacob inge a name giving me attempts to pronounce but i think it's from norway he bagged a gold medal in 1500 meters anyway as long as it's a medal, it's good for us, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, which means the chances of us uh, getting to our performance in Rio, in Brazil during 2016, where we bagged five gold medals, are getting slim. Because we expected a gold in 1,500 meters so that we can win another gold <laughs> in marathon to <laughs> tonight to get there. Yeah. Our chances are very scanty, right? Yeah, they're very scanty because I think it's it's only one race remaining. It's, yes. it's, it's on Elliot's shoulders to try and bag a gold. Mm -hmm. He'll be in the marathon tomorrow very early in the morning yes let's hope he bags another goal so that kenya at least can still finish top of africa on I, the medal standing I, I think it's a wake-up call now that uh, i think uh, the dennis and miguel were talking about it earlier it's all about also how we are positioning ourselves for the next uh, olympics championship because you look at the other Jamaica, you saw the 100 meters lady, the one who started in the 100 meters was actually a 22 year old and that one is going, that shows that they have already a plan for the future of their sprint team. Now for us, we'll also have to get to know that Ellen O'Berry's time had got to come at a certain point in time and you look at even before this year coming around, she had performed in other events before coming on to the Olympics and you also look at uh, Elliot Kipchoge, even if he had not run so much, he has also performed in the marathon and as he is going to the Olympics, I think there was one where we were expecting, I think it was London, the London marathon, where we expected him to defend it, he did not defend it. So, it is high time we also start seeing some other faces coming on to these championships. Uh, definitely. Let's w discuss about international football and uh, Jack Grealish joining Manchester City from Aston Villa. Good for him? He deserves being at the top level, playing Champions League football? Yeah, yeah, he totally deserves, based on his performances for City in the Premier League the past two seasons. You know, he's been their key man, he's been getting <coughs> the goals and assists. And him moving to City is, it should be scary for, for the chasers, the, the other pack, Chelsea, yes. United and Arsenal. Because you look at the array of attacking options that Pep has right now. You, you've got KDB, Mares, and then you had Grealish, another creative mind. Into, mm -hmm. the, into that three, it's, it's, it's really scary, for, especially for United, mm -hmm. who will be looking to finish first this season. Yeah. It, 
I was telling someone that yeah. you know even Manchester City as you speak right now they are contenders for UEFA Champions League title. Yeah. Look at their attacking department mm -hmm. the way he has put it and the players they are targeting to sign this particular season. I think uh, they are think aiming for lucrative you, you, accolade. You realize now that uh, these clubs are not joking anymore. They are going for the best of the best and uh, Jack Grealish show they have, they have picked out a, a player who brought Aston Villa from the second division to come on to the Premier League. He's proved himself to be a pivotal part of the Aston Villa campaign in the Premier League. And Pep Guardiola, if you saw last season, he was a master of rotation. And he understands that if he brings Jack Grealish in, he's adding another dimension onto his team and also you realize a player like his uh, playmaker Kevin De Bruyne will not be starting the season because he's injured. He, this is a kid, Philly Foden, was very pivotal for City, he's not going to be starting. So Grealish adds another flavor to that team. Definitely and Aston Villa, the team that he has left has also been busy. You know, they have signed three players so far. Yeah, yeah, and three players who had great careers, you know. Mm -hmm. Especially you look at Danny Ings, who mm -hmm. since he left Liverpool, he has been one of the top, top strikers. strikers in the league, you know. Mm -hmm. For Southampton especially, he's been getting goals. Yeah. And also, this, they managed to get a deal which many thought wouldn't happen. Em Emiliano Buendia, many thought he would go to Arsenal, but at the last minute, he chose Aston Villa, maybe because he, sh he saw the dream that uh, the manager, the thing that the manager was trying to build. And... Uh, uh, late in the week before Grealish was announced, they announced uh, Leon Bailey from Leverkusen. Mm -hmm. You know, another proper attacking player for Leverkusen and also for Jamaica. We saw his performances during the Gold Cup. You know, he's, uh, he's a young player and uh, I think Dean Smith will make good, good of him. Every player is, uh, it seems like every player is associated with mm -hmm. Arsenal. Even Lionel Messi, there is... <laughs> <laughs> A rumor going round. I don't know whether it's legitimate that he, <laughs> even Arsenal fans, mm. uh, you know, tweeting Messi's run inbox that come to mm. Arsenal and Messi saying no. <laughs> I, I think it's uh, if you look at uh, Messi is 34 years old at the moment. He has won everything that is it in football at the moment, and now except he's, international yeah, title. It is now that last lap on how you are going to finish your career, and he himself has said he, some time in my life I want to play outside Spain and the money bags are the guys who are going to get Lionel Messi. Remember his father who does all the contract negotiations for Lionel Messi goes for the jacular. How much money do you got on the table? And people can bring that money is either Paris Saint Germain or Manchester City or Manchester City Chelsea or Abramovich. So those are the Likely guys who can go for Lionel Messi. Wow. So yeah. we're waiting to see where Lionel Messi will be joining from Barcelona after announcing, uh, you know, departure from a team that he has served wholeheartedly for the last 21. 20 years. 21 years. To some Same. extent, you know, it was being said that Lionel Messi was sort of an overshadow to any forward who was getting signed by the team from, you know, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, Samuel Eto. You know Thierry Henry, a lot of players who go to Barcelona. To I, play I think for it was because forward. all these managers uh, build their teams around Lionel Messi. Yeah, that's why every player who had to come to Barcelona, you had to play around Lionel Messi. And I think that was uh, from I think 2006, 2007. Yeah. Also, when Guardiola took over that team, because uh, when the golden generation of Eto. Uh, Ronaldinho was leaving, and now Messi was coming on. And when uh, Guardiola made the invincible team of uh, Barcelona that won two back to back Champions League, now everyone had to model their team around Lionel Messi. Now, for him leaving Barcelona, he's going to bring another dimension. How is this team going to play without Lionel Messi? We are now we are going to see that four or five matches. We have never seen that before. Let's go to speak about what is happening at Tottenham. Harry Kane delay to link up with the rest of team squad who are currently training. The new coach uh, who got signed from Wolverhampton Wanderers, yes. Nuno, yes. said that he will have to speak to the forward on the way forward. I don't know. Is also Kane joining City? <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't think he will join City. Mm-hmm. I saw he put a statement last night on his social media platform saying uh, the, the, the talk out there was not right and he will link up with the Tottenham team today. But uh, many wouldn't believe that because, you know, Hurricane is desires to win a trophy, you know. Yes. He just looks at guys like uh, Luka Modric, Bell, and even Kyle Walker. Who left. Those who have left the same team. Yeah, and they've gone on to win countless trophies and up their game, become better players. And he'll be thinking for himself uh, that a lot. But uh, with Nuno coming in, you know, he brings a different style to, to Tottenham. I think Nuno is a great coach and I think Harry should stay and uh, they might do something there in the Europa Conference League. <laughs> they can start by winning that because it's just a, a small competition and maybe they can build from there with Kane because he's, he's, he'll always be their key man. Harry staying the, means they will win which title. No, because English Premier League keeps <laughs> out of there. Okay, arms. you never know. <laughs> but there, there was an article that was done uh, at the BBC that said, if Jack Grealish had stayed at Aston Villa, he was going to be immortal. Yeah. But if he goes to uh, now that he has gone to Manchester City, he will definitely win silverware. It is equivalent to Hurricane. If he sticks with Tottenham, it will be immortal to Tottenham fans and the English players. But he will never win silverware because I think he's 28, 29. If he moved to Manchester City and they are still talking about 150, 160, if he goes to Manchester City, they have the final piece of now dominating Europe, dominating the Premier League, and Harry Kane will finally have silverware. Romelu Lukaku, it seems like he wants to reunite with Chelsea Football Club. Chelsea have just won UEFA Champions League title. They seem to be so much busy as if it's a team that has done poorly, which means they want to maintain the same momentum of doing better, performing better, not only in England, but even in European continent in general. I don't know, chances of them reuniting with Romelu Lukaku from Inter Milan, Lukaku yeah. telling Inter to allow them to, to, sell, him. to sell him. Yeah, I think uh, that will probably happen because Chelsea are never afraid of spending, you know. Yes. They deny 100 million, they come back with 110. And uh, Lukaku seems interested to come back to the Premier League, which this season, you know, each team has to sign the big players. You look at what United City have been doing in the transfer. Yes. If you are Chelsea and you also want to go to the title, you finish third, mm -hmm. you, you have to up your game. And uh, be looking at Timo Werner's performances last season as the main man, he, he was meeting, missing a lot of easy chances and Lukaku you know he's a he's a top goal scorer he'll bury those chances once he gets them and Chelsea is also his home you know it was his first club in England and he's def he, if I think he will come back and uh, Chelsea will be uh, another scary team yeah. Romelu Lukaku what do you think about him I, I when he was at Man United yeah. some people especially even top pundits used to refer to him as misfiring striker you remember Gary Neville's comments yes. about Romelu Lukaku but when he joined Inter Milan I think he was accepted and he was you know recognized as their reliable at attacking yeah. you know forward he has done extremely better than what he did at Old Trafford I don't know. Can he replicate the same when he joins, he reunites with Chelsea Football Club? He can, he can, because now Chelsea will be looking for a replacement for the, uh, the uh, G Oliver Giroud, who left to AC Milan, and uh, Lukaku is a top striker who can come and play that role. And they still got uh, these other strikers who are not living up to expectation, the likes of Tammy Abraham, Hudson Odoi, they were not living up to those expectations. So Romero Lukaku can come and fill that gap. Until it's signed, then we can believe that he is actually going to Chelsea. And with the team that Thomas Tuchel has, and then you add Romelu Lukaku, it's a squad you have got to fear. Because it can chase any trophy on the planet. Now you guys coincidentally support one team which has been losing players to opponents. And opponents, <laughs> <laughs> wherever they are heading to, they mm -hmm. win accolades, they bag titles. Mm -hmm. You lost Romelu Lukaku to Inter Milan, he won Serie A title. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, the likes of Ashley Young, who else? Uh, uh, the Chilean player. Sanchez. Sanchez, Sanchez yeah. is also with Inter Milan, right? Yeah. yeah. And they bagged a title. What happens when Romelu Lukaku happens to join, <laughs> to reunite with Chelsea, and they do very well? It is, is it a disappointment? Uh, I think if you compare his time at United first, the, the manager was sort of different. You know, Mourinho is... is 
more of defensive minded uh, maybe the, the play will be monotonous crosses and long balls but a guy like Tuchel if you go to play with him he always mixes it up you know he wants fast players he wants fast play and he likes getting the ball to the strikers bit in the middle bit by the side so it will be a different uh, type of football he'll be playing at Chelsea under Tuchel and also everyone will want to see how his game has improved from his time in Italy you know we've seen him almost back top scorer last season for the past two seasons there's been getting the goals for Inter and coming back to Chelsea who need a striker right now he'll feel that pressure and he'll take that pressure and he'll try to lead the line properly let's talk about another controversial headline you know players from English Premier League to continue taking a knee this particular season as one way of uh, trying to combat racism which is an international monster we've seen other players saying come on we've done this sufficiently <laughs> like Wilfred Zaha of Crystal Palace completely refused to do it because yeah. however much you do it you get racially abused uh, it is because it's not enough it's not enough that when you take a knee you yes it's symbolic people will know what is happening and all that but at the end of the day from the people who are governing football, from FIFA to the federations, the FA and all other federations all around the world, taking the knee is not enough. Because even the Luton players who are starting, I think, their championship today, they say they are not going to take a knee anymore because taking a knee is not enough for these people to understand that racism is that bad. And until measures are put in place that you can do away with the racism now, is when people will understand that it is not good for the sport. Do you agree? Yeah, I do agree. And uh, especially who has to do more with the social media companies because that's where most of the racism happens. These days, uh, most players have social media accounts. It's, uh, you know, they post regularly. And after a bad game, when you go to the comments, you see a lot of people just uh, saying negative things and bad bad things down there and uh, they'll still log into Instagram or Facebook the next day and use their account as if they did nothing and uh, the guys at Instagram and Facebook won't change a thing so yeah. first of all we, we have to look at the social media companies they have to put uh, some tough rules into their platforms to ensure the safety of players against racism yeah well we're gonna wind up with what's happening in Tokyo Olympics the final for uh, football that is said to take place uh, in Japan, think it's Brazil against Spain. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Football has been low key. I don't know in Olympics, <laughs> in yeah. Olympics or a, any international championship yes. where a lot of disciplines are up for grabs and football is one of them. It gets overshadowed by, you know, these other disciplines. Did yeah. you follow? Yeah, I followed, but not that much. Uh, I think maybe it's because you're allowed to take a squad of a certain age and not <laughs> not your big players. Yes. Because I'm sure if Brazil had the Neymars the, <laughs> and Spain had its Busquets and guys, it, all the whole world will be watching it because it's actually a big game. But regardless of squads, when you look at these two teams, even the under 23s and it's under 21, yeah, they are and they are big players at big clubs. Richarlison is there, Martinelli is there for Brazil. There's Pedri, Unai Simon for Spain and. This is actually a big game. It's sad that it has been overshadowed and uh, at the Olympics because, you know, athletics also takes a huge center stage. <laughs> yes. It's marathon. At least the, the Kenyans get their time to shine on the world platform. But th there's no doubt this is a very big game because the players involved are still big players. Big yeah. game. It, I, I think uh, it's the future of uh, yes. football because there's the under-23s who are playing in the Olympics with only three senior players. One player who has got to be there and everybody is uh, doing watching has got to be the Brazilian fullback mm. uh, who, who is playing there and is 38 years of age and uh, now is going to uh, with 42 trophies and is going to get and is the captain. So it is a good one for him. Pedri from Spain at only the 18 years of age and he has played more than 73 games this season alone, so it's a big one for those two sides. Richarlison from Everton, he said he's using the Olympics as his uh, pre-season, as he is going to head on to the next one. So it will be good to see these guys lift a trophy at the end of the day. Guys, we have to end it on that particular note. Your parting shots, last uh, minute submissions or so. Robert, what are you looking forward to? I'm Besides not... tonight's marathon, <laughs> where Eliud Kipchoge, our good friend is... That, that is the <laughs> one I'll be watching, actually. I want to see how Eliud Kipchoge is going to do this one. I mean, if he's going to Are you sure you're going to be awake by that time? Yeah, I am. 
<laughs> if I was awake this morning, <laughs> I'd still be awake. <laughs> Ken? Yes. Yeah, I think uh, the community shield will yes. be happening. And I hope Leicester just give us a good, a good start to the season. Yeah. That's the only thing I want to happen today. Yes, this definitely. Weekend. Of course, it's been a fan zone, fan favorite segment of the touchline, which happens every Saturday. One, two, three. It's a pleasure doing this. And of course, thank you for tuning in. Our shout out to go to our technical team led by Brian Kimani and Timo and Mose uh, at the gallery, our camera lady Rose. Of course, without them, we wouldn't have facilitated the success of the show. Thank you for tuning in. See you next Saturday, same time, same place. God bless and keep safe.